You know about the brain regions that regulate ventilation, the medulla primarily, pons input as well. So we are going to look at what those centers need as stimuli, right? So altered PCO2, altered PO2, and pH are going to be detected by chemoreceptors. These chemoreceptors can be located centrally, so within the, um, the brainstem itself. The, these are central chemoreceptors in the medulla. Medullary chemoreceptors, central means in the brain. There are also peripheral chemoreceptors in the aortic arch and the carotid body. Peripheral, peripheral chemoreceptors, so in the periphery. There's going to be overlap of what these respond to. Um, so we've got PCO2 and pH. And you know those things are related, right? As PCO2 increases, it's going to decrease pH. pH is primarily the thing detected in the medulla. This is inside the brain. Um, the brain is very sensitive to changes in pH. So that's the first, the quickest, 70% um, of our carbon dioxide response is from this mechanism. Peripheral chemoreceptors can also respond to both pH and PCO2. Um, PO2, let's do this in a different color, is not as important a signal, so low PO2, which is kind of strange, right? Um, but it's largely to that, that pH effect. Detecting carbon dioxide quickly is, is more important than hypoxia. We'll come back to this a bit. So low PO2 is primarily detected by those peripheral chemoreceptors. So the sensor is going to be chemoreceptors, right? That's a, a receptor, a, a sensor are either here or here. Here is our sensor receptor. Our integrator is, regardless of where the sensor was, our integrator is going to be the medulla. The control region. So it may be that these receptors send a afferent signal a neural signal to the medulla from the periphery. Regardless of how the information gets to the medulla, the medulla is the integrator and makes that decision about whether to send an output signal via these nerves that travel to the diaphragm and intercostals here. So this as well, these red Nerves here, they also innervate the accessory muscles. So if needed to take a larger inhalation, these are the actual red things here are the output signal. Then the things like the any muscle that we're going to contact, internal, external intercostals and diaphragm are the primary right targets or effector. We're gonna have altered ventilation rate to exchange gas more quickly again. So it's a negative feedback loop. What are we maintaining? PCO2, PO2, and pH. And again, this um, is gonna be the first and biggest one. Here's another diagram, similar process, similar thing shown here. Um, this is just looking at, in this diagram, PCO2. Again, I told you that's the thing that our bodies respond to first before PO2. So I had that before. Changes in PCO2 regulate ventilation before PO2. 
two different mechanisms for this. This is our central, this is our peripheral. Our central is primarily through pH that's able to go into the um, extracellular fluid of the brain. This is about 70% of our response to changes in CO2 is high hydrogen, low pH, right? High PCO2 it equals high hydrogen, which is low pH. Peripheral chemoreceptors in the carotid body and aortic bodies, aortic arch, um, aortic bodies within the aortic arch mediate about 30%. So still important. This is the afferent impulse or input signal to the um, medulla, respiratory centers of the medulla. They're then going to um, have efferent impulses. These are, these are um, somatic motor neurons that are gonna innervate these skeletal muscles. High PCO2 would result in increased ventilation, which means more CO2 being inhaled. That's going to um, bring us back to homeostasis in terms of lower PCO2 and higher pH. So we've got here negative feedback. This high PCO2, this is called hypercapnia. Hypocapnia is low PCO2. Then oxygen, so if we did have low PO2, that could also be detected by these as well and initiate um, the same response, increased ventilation due to low PO2.